that rest and abide in every one of God's children tonight. It's good to be here. Uh, this morning in my haste, I did not have my lovely wife to stand. She was with me this morning. Amen. And we're going to ask her to stand tonight. Amen. Sister Eula, could you well, just raise your hand? She don't like to stand, but she will raise her hand. And we are grateful tonight that he, she's here uh, with us. Tonight we want to look at Malachi. That's chapter 3, verses 8 through verse number 10 tonight. Familiar passage to all of us, Old Testament a text. And the Bible says in verse number 8, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Then he says, in tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Y'all say glory. glory. And prove me. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The question that was raised, will a man rob God? So I just stopped by tonight to ask the question, in the form of a text tonight, a topic. And that question is, will a man or woman rob God? Because a lot of times when we look at the Bible and it says man, sometimes it means man. But here it's talking about a man and a woman. That's my question. Will you rob God. And I know nobody's not jumping up in the pews tonight to answer that question. So I got to preach a little bit here tonight. When we look at the Old Testament, and the Bible is talking about tithing and offerings. And a whole lot of us love for that to stay exactly where it is. Because for some of us, we don't like to give. So we'll say, Brother Preacher, that's Old Testament. We are what? New Testament Christians tonight. But then we have some preachers that will take certain things out of context. And they try to bind tithing and offerings on God's people today. But I start by to tell you that tithing and offering is Old Testament passage. When we get to the New Testament, we won't find tithing and offering there. But that don't eliminate our giving back to God. So when we look at tithing and offerings, uh, the question is raised, will a man rob God? Then he said, yet ye have robbed me. And then they asked a question, where have we robbed you? Then he says, in tithing and offerings. When God's people don't do what God wants them to do, then the house of God suffer. Y'all with me? I, I, I said, are you with me? 
When we look at Numbers, the 18th chapter, verses 21 down to verse number 32. When we look at tithing and what was the purpose for tithing. Tithing was for the Leviticus priesthood. Amen. It was for the Levites. It was for the priests of God. Amen. And when we look at that, uh, the reason God set up tithing, because when they entered into the promised land, that land that was flowing with milk and honey, amen, the land that God had promised, amen, uh, the Levites, did not receive a land inheritance. Y'all with me? So God set up a system because he did not want them out there working and doing things of that nature. They were to take care of that tabernacle. They were to take care of the temple of God. So their brothers became their inheritance. So what they would do, they will give a tenth to the Levites. Amen. And then we look at Deuteronomy chapter 26. And let's look at about verse number 12 and 13, if someone could read that for me. Because it was not just only set up for the Leviticus priesthood. Amen. It was set up for other folk inside of the camp. So when we look at tithing and offering, it was for the Leviticus priesthood that they would be able to sustain their family. So we look at Deuteronomy 26 and start with about verse number 12 there. The Bible says what? When thou hast made an end of tithing. Now he says, now when thou hast made an end of tithing. All the tithes of thine increase in the All third the year. All the tithes of thine increase. In the third year. He says now in the third year. Which is the year of tithing. Which is the year of tithing. And has given it unto the Levites. He says now I have given it unto who? The Levites. He said I have given it unto the Levites. The Amen. The stranger. He didn't only just give it to the Levites. But it was for the strangers, the fatherless, the fatherless, and the widows, and the widows. Read that they may eat within the gate. That they may eat within inside gate, the gate and be filled. And be filled. Read. Then, then shall thou say before the Lord thy God, Uh huh. I have brought away the hallowed things. He out said, Now nah, we done brought away the hallowed things. Out of mine house. Out of my house. And also have given them unto the Levites. And we have given it unto the Levites. And unto the stranger. Unto the stranger. To the fatherless. To the fatherless. And to the widows. And to the widows. According to all thy according commandments. According to all, according to all. Thy commandments. That you have commanded Which Lord. thou has commanded me. So God had commanded them that they will give this to the Levites. And the Levites would take care the fatherless, would take care the strangers, would take care the widows inside of the gates. This is the purpose for tithing and offering. So I raise the question tonight, will a man or a woman rob God? I'm asking you that. Now, if y'all with me, you're supposed to respond. You see what I'm saying? If, 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 if a man and a woman would rob God, then the church ought to say, yes! Don't sit up in here like, like y'all afraid. Amen? If the preacher said, talk to me, I want you to talk to me tonight. Amen? Uh, 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 and if a man and a woman won't rob God, you ought to say, no, they won't. But let me ask you again, and I'm going to ask this group right here, will a man or woman rob God? Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody here tonight. Will a man or woman rob God? Yeah. Yes, they will. Will a man or woman rob God? Yeah. Yes, they will. They robbed God back then, and why do you think tonight 
that men and women are not robbing God? Do you believe that God's house need to be taken care of? Do you believe that? And if we believe that, we ought to give to God. Amen? Because God has blessed us with it to give. When I look at everybody out there and I look at myself, don't look like we're missing no meals. Look like God been good to us. But somehow, some way, some reason, we come into God's house and we want to satisfy ourselves. Want to rub two pennies together and give to God. And God have blessed you with good health. God have blessed you with a good job. God have blessed you with a good mate. God have blessed, God have blessed, God have blessed, and we are cheating God. Won't give God what already belonged to God. Sit up in the church house, God bless you with a good job, and you. some people won't even put anything in the plate. When the collection plates start coming down the road, you know what they start singing? Pass me back. <laughs> Pass me back. But I start by to tell you, you're going to have to give an account one day or one night unto God. You got to give an account of your stewardship unto God. I just start by to tell somebody here tonight, you cannot hurt the preacher. You can't hurt the elders by holding your money. God going to keep on blessing the church anyhow. Folk want to know, Brother Moultrie, seem like the preachers in the church of Christ have lost the everlasting man. Where's the church going to be in the next five years, ten years? You know what I tell them, shut up! The church is going to be all right. Church don't belong to man. The church belongs to God. And I hear Jesus tonight saying, the gates of hell shall not, cannot, will not prevail against the church. Outside enforcers will never overrun the church. But those of us that are on the inside of the church is doing a disservice to the body. Won't give like you're supposed to give. Amen. Now the brother said, God is good. And somebody said, God is good. Not some of the time, but God is good all the time and if God is good then our collection ought to go up rather than coming down amen do y'all believe God own everything I said do you believe God own everything and if God own everything what do you think God needs Is giving a benefit to God? God own everything. God don't need your two pennies. But giving is to benefit us. Giving is to take care of the house of the Lord. He said, y'all go out there, get them ties together and bring it into my storehouse. He didn't say houses. One house. And that one house ought not to be your house. Because the house that you have, I don't care if it's a little shack side the road or a mansion on top of the heap. God gave it to you. I said, God gave it to you. Amen. And one day, you're going to have to give an account of your stewardship. 
that money that you're holding back, I stopped by to tell you, you better spend it. You better get rid of it. Sit up in the church house, get mad with the preacher, get mad with the elders, get mad with the deacons, get mad with the sisters, get mad with your husband. I'm gonna stop giving. And I feel sorry for you when you decide I'm gonna stop giving. Because giving is not to benefit God. He own everything. Giving is for your benefit. Amen. Now, now it, it's a shame where, where preachers have to leave preaching the word of God and got to go get a secular job to take care of their families and got a church house full of folk in it. Amen. Somewhere down the line, the Church of Christ have messed this thing up. Hello? Ah, the denominational church seem like they got it together. <laughs> Although they're tricking their people with that tithing and offering a situation, amen. But they make sure where the preacher is taken care of. Hallelujah. Not only the preacher is taken care, widows are taken care of. The fatherless and the strangers with inside the gate. We ought to be concerned about those that are less fortunate than we are. And you running around here driving a, a S550 and turning your nose up at somebody out on the bus bench. Something wrong with that picture? Amen. God bless you with that, S, that, that S550 Mercedes to stop by and pick somebody up. We got members of the church won't even. Catch you out there on Pat and Turner and leave you out there on Pat and Turner. I don't ride folk up in my new car. Might not have that new car too long. Too much longer. Because that car don't belong to you. It belong to God. That home that you live in don't belong to you. It belong to God. That money that you got in Bank America or up under your pillow or in the mattress. It don't belong to you. It belong to God. And everything that we own, everything that we possess is just simply on loan from God. That's how we got to look at this thing. Amen. I have never seen an armored truck leading a procession of a funeral. Everything that you own, everything that you possess, one day you're going to leave it. Amen. And here you are stacking up stuff, holding back from giving to the church, amen? Not bringing your gifts uh, to the storehouse. That, that there be meat in God's house for God's people. We're in the business of starving folk to death, amen? And when we look at this, when we look at this thing, when you die, the Bible says you don't carry nothing with you. They get you coming to this world and they get you going out of it. You can't take your possessions with you. Now don't think Brother Moultrie is preaching against possessions. I'm saying how do we use what God have given us. Amen. And what we use it for, we got to use it for the glory of God. And when you die, let me tell you something, when you die, when you die, let me tell you something. You're going to leave it. And you're going to leave it for another man. Uh-huh. All what you got. You're going to leave it, brother. You're sitting back there choking poor George to death. His eyeballs done popped out his head. You're so tight, you squeak when you walk. 
I'm not going to give the church one thing. And then when you die, you're going to leave all that you have. And you're going to leave it for somebody. And let, 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 let me just demonstrate who that somebody is you're going to leave it to. Is anybody in here by the name of Jody? In, in here, anybody named Jody? Is there any Jody's in there? Because I don't want nobody to get mad with me talking about I'm talking about this. Is there anybody in here named Jody? Nobody that want to own up to it. Well, when you die, Jody going to step in. And Jody ain't only going to get your girl and be gone. Johnny, Jody going to get your money and it's going to be gone. Hallelujah. So when we look at this thing about money, we better learn about how to deal and handle money. Now I heard Brother Moore said that they're going to have a class coming up. And, 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 and those of us that don't know about money and how to use money, we need to be in that class. Because some of us, uh, our debt ratio is up here. And our income is down here. Amen. And I know sometimes when we, when we come into the Lord's church, we come in here busted, dusted, and can't be trusted. But ain't, you, don't stay in that state. When God deliver you out of bondage, when God bring you out of Egyptian bondage, don't be like Israel. Always wanting to go back. And I stop by to tell you, if you got a credit card in your pocket and that credit card is 29.9% interest on it, I stop by to tell you that ain't nothing but blood money. If you got it in there, you better use it and pay the bill before it come. I'm just trying to help somebody up in here. You take your girlfriend out and, and you spend a hundred dollars out on that date and well, take your wife out. <laughs> you use that credit card. Hey, Amen. Y'all done set up there and ate $100 worth of food. And it don't take much to eat $100 worth of food. You and I, we went to a place, uh, one of our sisters gave us a gift certificate was for $100. I was trying to eat $100 worth of food and wound up have to put an, a, another hundred with that hundred. <laughs> so don't tell, some of these places you go. Hey Amen. We had a good time. And it was only another couple in the restaurant. And when we got there, I said, babe, I reserved this just for you. <laughs> oh, you got to know how to take your wife out on a date. I'm just dropping that off while I'm, that ain't going to cost y'all nothing. That, 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 that didn't cost you anything. But you mess around there and pull out that credit card. And you done spent $100, $200, and when that bill comes, you're going to wind up spending about $550 to $1,000. You better get in that class. And if Brother Moore ain't teaching it like that, I come and teach it. <laughs> but we can't give God two pennies. But then we, 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 we out there with a high interest rate. And some of us don't know, you, you remember when we was in college, uh, uh, they just give you them cards. That's when you're in college. And then somebody tell you, you got to pay it back. You got to pay that money back. And that money is worse than mafia money. That's blood money. And many of us, and I guarantee you, if, if I tell you, pull your, pull your cards out, some of us got them stacked up from the floor up. And that's why we can't give to God like God want us to give. Because it's too much about us and not enough about the God that have saved us. So y'all get in that class and learn how to hold on to a dollar. Everything you make, you don't have to spend. And I want to tell you that we are one of the greatest consumers on the planet Earth. Everything we make, we give it to somebody else. 
never thinking about our young folk and, 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 and making an investment in them. And we cannot give to God because we done messed ourselves up. So some of us are like that. Amen. And it ain't nothing wrong with saying I'm messed up from the flow up, but I stop by to tell you, you don't have to stay there. When God bring you out of Egypt, don't go back into slavery. Amen. And that money that you're spending on them credit cards, give it to the church. Put it in the collection plate. Hallelujah. So, so, so let, me, let, me, let me just show you the kind of giver that God loved under the New Testament. Because just as hard as I fight them denominational preachers out there that brings about false doctrine, the same thing I do in this brotherhood. I'm going to stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to tell your members uh, tithing and offering, and if that's what you want to do, I ain't going to mess with you too much. I'm just going to tell you, well, if, if, if you're going to tithe and offering, why are you taking it up every week? Because I can't find it every week. I can't find it in the Bible. But you are telling your folk, uh-huh, uh, every week, tithing and offering. And then not only that, we get on denominational churches and say, now, if you, if you tithing every week, why you're not communing? And we got some brothers that, that have online communing. Now, I, I, I ain't got my head around that yet. <laughs> online, you're going to go online and commune. I ain't got my head around that yet. I got to listen to that a few more times before I can see that. The Bible tells us to come together upon the first day of the week. Amen. So when we look at our giving, our giving ought to be how often? So every week that we come into God's house, we need to come up in here with something. It might not be what we want to give, but we got to come with something. And when God brings us up out of Egypt, then we can give back to God the way God expects for us to give. It all belonged to him anyhow. Amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Ah, the Bible teaches us there. He which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. And you know what? The church have the biggest problems out of folk who don't give. The first thing when something happens, the first place that they come is to the church house. Amen. Hallelujah. And haven't contributed one penny. But then the leaders got to gotta listen to this and the Bible also tell us that we got to do good unto all men, especially they of a household of faith. Amen. One of the saddest times in my ministry is is when people have not prepared themselves to exit this life. Spiritually and physically. Amen. Come in boohoo crying expecting for the church to pay for their loved one funeral. Amen. Ah, let me just drop this back. How many of us in here know that one day or one night we're going to die? 
We know that. We didn't come here to stay. Amen. So, so, so when your family is hard on the family, when a loved one pass, anyhow. But now you got to go out and have a car wash, a bake sale, and a fish fry. Man, car washes, bake sale, and fish fry can't pay no $11,000, $15,000 for a funeral. And the undertaker and the cemetery, they ain't gonna fool with you. They'll put that loved one on ice until you come up with some, some moule. Amen. Now, if we know that we're gonna leave from here, why can't we take care of business before we leave? Huh? Why can't we handle our own business? Man, they got pre-need packages that, that, that you can put a, a, a nickel down and, and, and catch me when you can. But at least you will be paid up. When you press your head to a dying pillow, your casket will already be there. Cemetery property already purchased. The only thing you got to do is show up. That's all you got to do. But we put heartaches and heart pains on our family members. Because we're trying to hold on to that almighty dollar. And it don't belong to us anyway. So then the Bible says that we need to give. And the way that we give, God is looking for voluntary giving. And then not only God looking for a voluntary Given, God is looking for willing giving. He says, not grudgingly, nor of necessity. And some of us pull out a hundred dollars, put it in the collection plate, but all while you're putting it in there, I wish I wouldn't have never put that in there. They ain't gonna do the right thing with it, no how. I should have kept my money in my pocket. That's exactly what you should have done. Kept it in your pocket. You didn't have to give it. You remember Ananias and Sapphira? Lied and died. And I guarantee you today, if people will fall dead from lying, I guarantee you next Sunday, it won't be no more lying in the church. I know how to cut this lying stuff out. God took you tonight for lying, I guarantee you next Sunday and the Sunday after that, nobody will be lying in the church. Praise be to God. So we, we, God love, you gotta be happy when you give it. God loves a cheerful giver. When we give, we got to understand while it's in your pocket, it belonged to God. When you put it in that collection plate, it still belonged to God. You don't have to worry about what these elders doing with the money. That ain't for you. Amen. Because God going to hold them accountable for the money. And if they mess up, guess what? They're going to stand before a just God, just like you. Amen. There's a lot of things that this congregation have accomplished. But I believe if the church would have went in their own pockets. Y'all listen to me. I know we got buildings over here and buildings over there. I was here open house day and all of this here. But when you Fool around with Caesar. Amen. Then you got to answer to Caesar. But if God's people get together 
and God's people do. And I'm not knocking you for what you have done. Don't, 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 don't look at me like that. I have to take my coat off. I'm just saying we would have been better down the road together. Then you are able to set the policy. You are able to set the rule. You don't have to answer to nobody but God. Because God's people got together and was able to accomplish some things. All grants, well, when I was out there shooting dash, you know, I learned then all money ain't good money. You see what I'm saying? Some of them games I wished I would have walked away from. Because I got some 38s drawn on me. Some games I should have never entered. Now I told you I was a bad boy once upon a time. Hallelujah. It's best to be able to stay with the Lord. So when we come into God's house, don't come into God's house, bent over, broke down. Stand up. When that collection plate begins to, to come down your aisle, you make, some, make sure you put something in it. Amen. God is going to make everything come together, everything work good together for God. So when we come into God's house, we come with something. Uh, don't tell me you're broke. If you can buy your kids them tennis shoes that they wear, some Kobe's and, and all that kind of stuff, glory be to God. And they haven't signed nowhere, no basketball contract, but you buying this stuff. <laughs> just get them some bubba gums. They work just as good as Kobe's. <laughs> and give the rest of the money to the Lord. So don't come in broke down, bent over. You come in, you stand up straight, and you give to God because God loves a cheerful giver. And then somebody said, well, Brother Moultrie, under the old law, they gave 10%. What should we give under the New Testament? And by you asking that question, tell me you ain't where you need to be. Because it ain't how much I ought to give. Look at what God gave us. And then that should dictate to us what we ought to give back unto God. God gave heaven best. What are we giving? God the leftovers? You know what God ought to be? God ought to be just like Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam take his straight off the top. And I haven't heard any of us writing down, complaining about Uncle Sam taking our money. And that's what they do. You go out there and work 40 hours, Uncle Sam get his before you even see yours. He taking his off the top, baby. Yeah. I said he's taking it. And if Uncle Sam taking uh, 33 and a half percent from us, or 20 percent, all depends on how much you're making, what would God take from us? Think about that. Why are you trying to ask me how much should I be given? Because if you ask me, I say give it all. <laughs> Praise be to God. But God loves a cheerful giver. And we have to give back unto God. That God's house may be taken care of. Amen. And you know what? I love preachers. And I don't just love preachers because I'm a preacher. But the church does a disjustice to preachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We give time, energy, everything 
to the church and then grow old. Amen. And the church don't look out for the preacher man. The moment that church, uh, that preacher presses here to a dying pill and die, that church is looking for another preacher and what about his wife? If it's nothing in the contract, because that's what they're going to tell you, uh, Brother Hope, Brother Moultrie, that wasn't in the contract. But then when we signed up to work with the church, wasn't the church supposed to look out for the preacher? Y'all done got quiet on me. I know I'm driving home tonight. Supposed to take care of the preacher and the preacher family. It's more involved here at Figueroa than just Brother Hope. Brother Hope have a mate that come along with him. And it's this church responsibility to make sure that he and his family is supported. Y'all say amen when you can. Amen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Where I preach, I didn't just come there by myself. I came with a family. And somewhere the church is gonna have to learn from the eagles. Amen. The eagle is the top bird uh, in the fowl. And who is that love chicken? They always say preachers, they tell them jokes, preachers love chicken. Uh-huh, but preachers ain't the only one love chicken. I ain't ran across with one guy who don't like chicken. Amen. But that eagle is able to fly high when he's young. Got good visions. A masterful hunter. Amen. But then the eagle get old, can't fly high. Then he got to get to the ground. He can't hunt no more. He loses his strength. He become weak. But you know what them other eagles will do, them young eagles? They don't forget about the old eagle. Amen. They know he can't fly. He's weak. Uh, uh, he can't hunt anymore. So what they do? They drop some food down to him. Hallelujah. Amen. That that old eagle is able to eat. Able to build his strength up. Able to take back to the air once again. The church needs some loving and kind people in the church. That's looking after the affairs of the church. Making sure that their minister and the minister's wife, the family, is taken care of. Making sure that this church become a beacon light to the community in which it sits. We ought to be concerned about the homeless. The hungry. And I know anytime we open up our gates, open up our doors for the needy, the greedy going to come through. Every week we're feeding the people in our community. And there are folk that come up in there in Lexuses and, and Cadillac Escalades and, and Mercedes Benz and, and all, but we don't, we just keep on serving. I told my people, don't you say nothing to them. If they come through this online, you serve them. Because we're going to get the greedy right along with the needy. And let me tell you something. The church don't only look out for the preacher and the strangers, but also the fatherless. Those kids that don't have parents, 
The church ought to be, don't be looking at the government for everything. What is the church doing? Hallelujah tonight. And then widows. Now I'm talking about widows in deed and not widows in need. It's a difference between a widow <laughs> in need and a widow in deed. But the widows in deed who don't have any family, the church look out for them. That's the preacher's responsibility to make sure of the flock. Elder's responsibility to make sure of the flock. That everybody will have meat in the Father's house. So church, if you're here tonight and you, you, you just haven't been given like you know you should, you might be stuck in Egypt tonight, but God going to free you one day or one night. Don't get entangled in bondage any longer. You live not above your means, but you begin to learn how to live beneath your needs. That you are able to leave a legacy here for your family. You're able to give back. You're able to make an investment in your loved ones. You're able to make an investment in the church. So get in that class. Might learn us how to deal with money because a whole lot of us don't know how to manage money. Amen? There's no university out there that teaches you that. And I know fellows who have uh, degrees in finance and and broke his Job's turkey because they didn't teach him anything. Who in here want to hit that, 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 that multi-million dollar lottery? I say, anybody in here? Well, well, one brother back there raised his hand, but he took it down real fast. <laughs> we in the church now. Some things we ought not be doing. <laughs> I saw you when your hand went up and came down fast. Had to think about you in the church house tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are people that have nightmares that have become millionaires. They don't know how to take care, manage. So this would be a good class, I do believe, that you can invest in. And when you invest in that, you're investing in yourself. So tonight, if you're here and the trade just been passing you back, you know what God wants? God ain't concerned about your money. I want to tell you that now. Amen. The church is going to benefit. The church is going to roll on with your money. But God ain't concerned about your money. God is concerned about you. It's just like that preacher down there in Jump Off Georgia, a little church, old preacher. And he was preaching about giving and there was a young man out in the audience who didn't have a penny in his pocket. But the sermon had moved him so that as that plate kept coming and getting closer and closer to him, he wondered and he contemplated with inside of himself, I don't have any money to give. But the preacher preached hard, the preacher preached long, and what the preacher said made a whole lot of sense to him. So when the plate came to his row, he started sweating more heavier, thinking about what the old preacher had said. And when the plate came to him, he stepped in the plate. Somebody need to step in the plate tonight. Because God ain't concerned about your money. God is concerned about you. And if God get you, guess what he got? He got your time, he got your talent, and he have your money. So tonight, we need to step up and step in to the plate. We need to give 
ourselves to the Lord and stop robbing God. There's some people write a $500 check. Amen? But you don't see them. But three times out of the year, Mother's Day, Easter, y'all got it. Y'all know them kind of folk. Amen. Don't give any time and don't give any talent, but they give their money. With God, God want it all. And if you're here tonight, I should have told y'all when I started, I shall not be long. My timekeeper is keeping time on me tonight. You can do something about it tonight. You can come. You don't have to be broken over any longer. You don't have to walk around in the church house like an ostrich with his head in the sand. You can pull your head up. You can step proud tonight knowing that God is concerned about you. And if God have you, he got your time. He got your talent. And he have your money. So if you're here tonight and you need to come, come while we stand and while we sing the song of invitation. Come tonight. Hide you in the blood of God will hide you in the blood tonight. For the Lord will take He will you take in. you in. I'll hide you in the blood. And of he'll hide Jesus. you tonight in the blood. Oh, hide you in the he'll blood. He'll hide you in the blood. Oh, the storm. Look at the storm. Oh, the storms are raging high. Oh, hide oh he'll hide you tonight. The and he'll hide you to the danger. You the danger pass you back. Come.